this video, I'm going to talk about the projects which you create within Azure AI Foundry. Now, if you want to know what an Azure AI Foundry is, and if you have missed the introductory video, make sure that you navigate to my channel and go into the particular playlist and view Azure AI Foundry video introduction first, because that will give you a context about what is a project and why do we create a project and what is Azure AI Foundry in brief. Now, projects. Now, what is a project? A project is basically an, a container with tools for developing AI artifacts. So if you are creating an AI service or if you are creating an AI application for your end user, those all things can be contained within a project. You can have multiple projects created for different work area or work stream or workloads. And within that project, you can perform some activity. So projects are basically easy to manage containers for work. Uh, Azure AI Foundry project is a place where you can do most of your development work. Now, the development work depending on who's doing what. So it can be a code, it can be a configuration, it can be uh, setting up some connection references. Uh, and you can also deploy a model uh, that involves uh, selection of a project. So what happens like when you deploy a model, it will ask you which project you want to deploy to. So there are multiple starting points to start with a project. So you can either start with starting with the Azure resource or you can directly create a project or you can directly create a deployment or you can directly create a hub. Okay, so these are like different starting points, but just to give you a concept about the project, project is basically a container with tools for AI customization and orchestration. Now, when you create a project, so when you create a project, what happens? Okay, so when you create a project, you get uh, to basically see some information in the back end. Okay, uh, once the project is created, here you will be seeing some Azure AI service resources and the API key. You will see various URL which gets generated. So Azure AI inference, Azure Open AI, Azure AI services. Uh, and also you will see a project connection string. Now, what you can do within the project, so you can basically add a user, you can connect resources, you can view the quota, you can track the cost, and all these things you can do in a centralized place known as management center. Now, when you create a project, there are some things happening in the back end, right? So it is an Azure component. So that means that Azure resources is connected to a subscription. Subscription has a resource group, resource group belongs to some location so your project belongs to some location so there is a hub which is attached to a project so uh, so the hierarchy is like hub is at the top level and then you can have multiple projects within a hub so when you create a project make sure that either you have already created a hub or while creating a project it will ask for you to connect to a hub or create a hub then the data and all gets stored in a backend storage so that's the data storage and then in order to connect to various services you need something called as a networking component so that's whether you want a public network access or private network access so those kind of configuration are done using this uh, what resources gets created when you create a project so this is uh, the screen when you create a project this will be the output so this is uh, uh, basically stock standard Azure AI related uh, details like it will list down the resource group location subscription ID and if you want to operate on a project you need to view that in a studio so you when you click on launch studio it will take you to Azure AI Foundry previously called as Azure AI Studio and then from there you can actually view the information now uh, resources which gets created now this is not mandatory but there are something which gets created so when you create a project definitely there will be a hub if the hub is already uh, existing you can point to that hub if the hub is not there then you it will automatically create one hub then various Azure AI services or uh, key vault to store your credentials storage account which will store all the artifacts with regards to uh, Azure AI 
uh, and then Azure AI project itself and recovery services vault. And then there are other things like application, so application insights. Uh, th those all things are not mandatory, but then there is a way through which you can create that as well. So let me show you in a demo. So I've already created one project. Uh, so this is how the project will look like. But just to give you a start, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. So I'll just type portal.azure.com. And then from here, I have an option to either create a resource or just navigate to Azure AI Foundry. So what you can do is like just navigate to Azure AI Foundry. So if the Azure AI Foundry is not available, you can just go ahead and search for it. So Azure AI Foundry, and then you will be navigated to that same screen. Now, initially, when you start fresh, you will not have all this information. Uh, it will be all blank. So you just go ahead and create a project. Now, you can create a hub, as I mentioned to you, because hub is a parent level. So ideally, you should create a hub and then create a project. But then you can go ahead and create project as well. So I'll just create one project, so project. And it will ask you to select the subscription. So this subscription is good for me. Uh, resource group, I can create uh, a new resource group. So I'll just call this resource group as uh, Feb 2025. Okay, And it will provision a new resource group. Now. It is asking me to create the project name. So my project name would be again Feb2025. Uh, and this is a friendly name for that project. So I can make this as Feb2025 project Girish. Okay. And what is the hub? So either you select the existing hub or you create a new one. So I'll just create a new one and then again it will take you to that same thing. So you go to subscription, you select the resource group. Now in the resource group, you can uh, either select whatever resource group which you have created or uh, you can select an existing hub. Now here I can select, say, let me select a resource group of MVP region as East US. So it is asking for region when you create a hub. Okay. And then you specify the uh, hub. So I'll just call this a hub 007. This is a friendly name for the hub default project resource group is MVP. Uh, and then and then I can connect to various other services. OK, now. This way. Why I have come into this particular section is because the hub was not created, right? So that's why I always mention that you first create a hub. Okay, and then once you create that hub, you specify that. So there are multiple ways through which you can do that. Uh, Azure AI service base model. So if you want to uh, have a different uh, Azure AI services base model, uh, that includes OpenAI. If you want to create that, you either you can create a new or you can select an existing model. So I'm, I'm just keep the selection as it is. I'll just click on review plus create and let it create. So if there are any validation error, it will through uh, and then it will not allow you to provision that. So what we are doing is like we are creating a hub. So we first went to create a project, but then the project didn't allow us to create until unless we create a hub. So it is creating that hub. Once that hub is created, it will then allow us to create the project. It might take some time to provision a hub because in the back end it is provisioning various resources. Uh, now it has, I think it has already created or it is in the process of creating a hub. So I'll just click on cancel over here. Now, once the hub is created, you will see the hub listed over here, right? Now it might take some time. So for just for the sake of this example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just select the hub as whatever is existing. Okay. So I'll just create this hub and then later on we can use the other hub. So just select over here, review plus create. And once you create this, so there are a couple of things uh, which uh, it has, like say there is something called as identity. So if you see here, identity is by default, it is selected as system assigned identity. Uh, you have an option to select user assigned identity. And for storage account access, you can either use credential based or identity based access. Now, depending on how your solution is structured, you can use that. But I'm going to just keep it all defaults. OK, now, if you don't know about manage identity, manage identity basically enables Azure resource to authenticate to cloud service without 
storing the credentials in code. So it happens automatically. It is all done by Microsoft Azure. So once enabled, all the necessary permission can be granted using Azure role-based access control. Okay, so I'm, I'll just keep it simple. I'll just keep it system assigned identity credential based access and all good, click on create. Now, as you see in the message over here that this particular deployment has succeeded and this particular uh, hub was created, okay? So we are not going to use that hub. We are just selecting the existing hub, which is already created. So click on review plus create, and then this deployment will happen. And then once this deployment is submitted, this deployment will get processed and the project will get created. Now the project creation is uh, will be pretty much quick because it is uh, the hub and all are already provisioned. So there's not much, nothing much to do in terms of project creation because all the heavy lifting has been done by during the hub creation process. Now, once this project is created, we will navigate into the project. So let this uh, deployment happen. Uh, and once that is done, so as you see over here, the deployment is complete. You can navigate to the resource. So I'll go to go to resource and then this is the project. Now here uh, in the project section, you can see the overview. You can see the activity log for that particular project. You can control the access right by going to access control IAM. You can configure the tax if you want to track the cost for this particular system. Now, then you have various settings for the project. So if you go to properties, you can see various subscription name, resource ID, key vault ID. So all this configuration information for a project is available. And then if you want to <coughs> track the logs or application insight related details or metrics, then you can go into monitoring. Then there is an automation and then eventually help. But the main point is if you want to see what is going on in the project, you need to go into the Azure AI Foundry by launching the studio. And once you are in the context of a project, here you will see various information. So I'm in the context of a project and within a project, I can do a whole bunch of things. I can select a model for a project. I Once I select a model, I can go into playground and then select the model which I have uh, selected and then work uh, and then test the model. And then once satisfied, I'm going to uh, finalize that particular model. Now. When your project is created, you have an option to edit the project name, edit the description. You can select from here. This is the context. So you can go into various other projects from here. You can view the project settings by going into management center and you can add users into the project. You can view the quota, you can track the cost, you can connect the resources. You can copy the location, subscription ID, subscription and importantly project connection string so this is also very much important to know where it is then there is something called as an api key so against an ai service you have an api key generated so uh, these are the listing of the endpoint so if you see here this is ai services resource and this is the api key I have an option to select multiple AI service resource within a project. So this is the by default, which we have selected. Now, if I change it, all the information will get changed. Okay. Now, what are the things we get from here? Azure AI inference. So I can get this Azure AI model inference endpoint to call all the deployed base model. Okay. Azure OpenAI. So use the following endpoint to call your Azure OpenAI model. So anything specific to Azure OpenAI, you can utilize this. And anything specific to Azure AI services, you can use this particular endpoint. So as you see in the description, it says use the Azure AI services endpoint to call computer vision, content safety, doc intelligence, language translation, and token services. Now, remember, this Azure AI service is only specific to Microsoft Azure AI services. So all the uh, the cognitive services, related services, which was available previously, those all things are segregated over here, OK? And speech to text endpoint, text to speech endpoint, and Azure AI services endpoint, all these things are specified over here. So this is the main point, main area whereby you can navigate. Now, if you want to switch to different project, you can go from here and then you can navigate to different project and then that will take you to the context of a different project. And all these projects will have its own API key, own endpoint, all those sort of things, okay? Now, if I go into say, 
Gerish Jan 2025. Okay, so this is the and this is an another project uh, which has an endpoint, which has a key uh, and all those things. Now, what I can do, I can go into model catalog. Now here, as you see, uh, here it will list on all the models which I've already deployed, okay? Now, as you see over here, uh, I have not selected any model. So I have an option to select a model for that specific project. But those all things I'm going to cover in a separate video, but just for you, your understanding, you should know that once you are in the context of a project, you can select a model, you can navigate to the playground, okay? So let me select uh, December 2024, because in December 2024 project, I have already selected one uh, model, okay? So if I go to chat playground, it is telling me, oh, you already have a deployment because you've already selected a model. Now here you can specify your data, you can specify your parameters and from here you also can generate a prompt okay to be giving uh, to give that uh, model and instruction and context but here i can just say uh, write a poem about australia and i will give that information to the chat playground and then it will start you know like uh, suggesting me the poem and i can even stop the response so i'll just click on stop and then it has given me a nice poem it says down under where the southern cross shines that's land of enchantment as old as time a wild expanse of sunburnt hues so all those things you know it has automatically generated so i've tested this model and if i'm happy with the response then i'm go going to uh, or, you know like further evaluate with different vendors and then once it's all done i i have an option to fine tune uh, by adding my own data source so if i have my own document or like a pdf document or a word document or any sort of data source then i can upload that document and i can say that hey uh, do not use the word uh, kangaroos okay or do not use the word great barrier reef so i have an option to filter that and i'll say only select the content from a specific data so, so i have all those options which i can do and here you can set various parameters okay so depending on how creative you want the response are. so all these things can be done uh, but in the context of this particular uh, video i'm just going to stop over here but i'm going to cover all the other aspects in a different section so that's it folks, this is how a project gets created and this is how you can configure a project using Azure AI Foundry. Thanks for watching.